Shall we begin? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Really Random Rants. The show we do. Just that. I'm Tim. I'm Vic. And he is Brian from Mythbusters. So today we're going to be asking him a few questions about the show. So the first question is, how did you get to become a new Mythbuster? Okay, so did y'all watch Mythbusters the Surf? Yes. Okay, so you went through the search part. So I guess the real question there is how did I find out about the search, right? My mom. My mom told me about the search. I was sitting there and I was going, my whole life, I'd love to do that for a living. I've had lots of different jobs, lots of experience, science, building, everything because I had watched Mythbusters and loved it. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh God, I'm actually unemployed and homeless and I could really use a job. And I'm applying for like park ranger and like rescue diver jobs, just anything I can, I can find that I think would help humanity. And my mom sends me this little news clip and it says, apply for your job. And I'm like, eh, ain't gonna happen. And I'm like, I right, fill out the application. All right, oh, you know, I'll give that a good shot. Fill out the application really well. And then I send in one video because they want a 90 second video. And it's literally me on a road trip with a friend in Central Park or in uh, Times Square going, hey, it's Brian, we're having a fun time in Central or in Times Square. And uh, that's not what they wanted. They asked for something like Mythbustery. And I get an email back that just sort of says, nice application, can you send the right video? And so then I sent the one that's on the Science Channel website now. They like the video, we had a little interview, and then we get on site and the rest is all on TV. Great hat collections. They're easy to come by. As well as ruggedly handsome beards. Engineering records, not a big deal either. Sure, you probably have lots of people with obscure licenses and certifications just like me. But I'm not just a published scientist and nerd who's cut open human decomposing corpses. I'm much more. So, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. One superpower. I think invisibility. Because like, if you can walk through walls or if you can fly, that's all great. But if I'm invisible, I can sneak onto an airplane. I can sneak around and like, you're essentially infinitely fast because no one knows where you're at at any point. And I think it's just like one unified superpower. Now, scientifically, would you still want that power? Can I reverse it? That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, if I can turn visible, I mean, I saw the Invisible Man, and that did not go well for him in that movie, and I could see that happening. That, like, I feel like John would think about how do I change it back, and I'd just be like gung ho in making it happen. Okay, so when you went on the MythBuster set for the first time, not the search, but just the actual new show, did you feel a lot of pressure? Because you're like, whoa, I have to live up to this legacy. Yeah, it's that, that legacy and the way John and I feel the weight of that legacy and how important it is, is part of the reason we were chosen. The producers and the crew all got a say on the search and they didn't want people who didn't care about Mythbusters. So that's something that weighs on us everywhere. And like even right before this panel, we're thinking about that legacy and making sure that what we do respects Jamie and Adam and what they built in Mythbusters because we're not here to replace them. We're no, we know we're not Jamie and Adam. We're here to be the next generation to inspire the next generation to replace us. Because Mythbusters as this educational, entertaining franchise can't die. It's gotta go on. So what is one thing that you haven't exploded yet that you want to explode? Oh, so here's the thing. Last night, I got to ring the closing bell at NASDAQ with John and they gave us two of these little word crystals. Well, we're gonna explode one without a doubt, right? Because who on this planet has blown up the NASDAQ crystal, right? Yeah. What was your favorite part of being on the set but when you weren't doing this? Like just hanging around, what was your favorite thing? Oh, okay, so not part of the show, just being on the set. Right. For the search? For the search. Okay, so the search was filmed at 3210 Studios. And 3210 Studios used to be Lucas. So 3210 Studios is where, like say, a speeder bike on indoor was exploded inside the studio and there's bolts and pieces on the wall where they're lodged in the wall from the explosion. And uh, the coolest part of it is THX. You know THX Quality Sound? The, the THX studio that George Lucas built to be the standard is still at 3210 Studios. And we were able to sit down and watch Jaws in that studio. And someone pointed out that we were sitting in George Lucas' seat because he sat in 
or uh, uh, every seat. Yes. So, um, what do you say to those um, out there who are doing like YouTube channels where they're trying to do a bunch of different science experiments, like filling pools with blood? You know? I, I love it. I mean, the most important thing to me is safety. I've seen some stuff that terrifies me. And we take unbelievable, like, we use equipment, probably thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment just to make certain things safe to do, like, a $10 experiment that runs a huge risk. Beyond that, though, I love YouTube. I love the people doing experiments, and I don't want them to stop ever because I want them to be inspiration for things that we can go look at or them to be inspired by us and go farther with things we've done because, I mean, I know people are going to say, you could have done that better, you could have done that different, you didn't do it right because I watch Mythbusters and I still feel the same way, and I, I hope they go out on YouTube and give it a shot their way. Let's see it. All right, so our final question for you is since we're here at New York Comic Con, did you ever expect that you would be a guest and that you would be at a panel at New York Comic Con or any Comic Con ever? No, man, this is unbelievable to me. This idea, like, remember when John said on stage, he's like, this is fake, this isn't real, like, the job application? I kind of felt the same way. And then you get done with the search, you're like, this is real. Then you went and you're like, this isn't real. Then you filmed three, two thirds of a season of actual Mythbusters and you're still like, this isn't real. And then you come to a Comic Con panel and people start saying, hey, Brian, hey, John, and you're like, I, I think this is real. This this here tonight is the moment that I think it's sinking into me and John that, that there's people like y'all who love watching us and that are excited to see our season with Buster. And that's amazing because we love y'all. So yeah. Uh, can you do a quick shout out to the facts? Watching Mythbusters, he's obsessed with Mythbusters, loves them. Yeah! Alright, so shout out to the Baxter. We hope to see you watching this season of Mythbusters starting November 15th on Science Channel and watch the whole thing because this season is incredible. I'm a huge fan of the old show and I promise you, I haven't seen all of our season yet, but as they edit it, I can't wait to see it. Alright, so wait, one last thing. Where can um, your fans find you? Yeah, so on Twitter, I'm at BS Forgery, Instagram at BS Forgery, and on Facebook at BS Forgery, because I used to blacksmith and it's burning spook spool forgery.